everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you people doing? Yes. How are you guys doing? Okay. So I guess we should welcome the legends. Yes. Welcome, legends. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hello, Lavanya. Hi, Ar hi, Orchid. Good afternoon. Yes, so this session is exclusively for legends. Yes, Ultra Legends can also watch it because this is the 11th standard portion. But yes, we are going to start. Okay, we are actually... Ayyo, one second, one second, one second. Yeah, so we are going to start, okay, with... Plant Kingdom actually. Yeah. We'll start with Plant Kingdom. Okay. So biology classification. That was a mistake. But anyways. 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 Just a second. Right. 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 Hello. A Singh. Hi Zed. Good afternoon. Hi Nishant. Hello Tanima. Good afternoon. There's a little bit of lag. Okay. Between your chats and everything. But otherwise it's all cool. Yes, so we're going to start with Plant Kingdom. Okay, we are straight away starting with Plant Kingdom. I know biological classification is there, but uh, maybe while revising or after the entire 11th portion is over, I will take a biological classification. Okay, I found out that in a lot of schools, they have started with Plant Kingdom. Okay, so I thought we will start with Plant Kingdom, right? Bhupati, okay, Legend Sarana is here. Okay, so how many of you guys are actual legends? I, uh, the droppers are there, the re repeaters are there, I know. But otherwise, there are many, many legends in our class. Okay, so we will start with the session. Before we start, come on, smash the like button. Okay, so that we also can reach more people and uh, we'll have more fun. Yes, hello Arunmuri. Okay, okay. So, Plant Kingdom, uh, when I talk about Plant Kingdom as a chapter for NEAT, okay. The questions that come out of this chapter are all example based. Okay, many example based questions are here. And uh, most of the questions are to the point also. Okay, they're most, very much to the point. So, we will talk about examples. We will also, you know, I'll, I'll tell you how to remember certain things, uh, which I hope can make things easier for you. Okay, yes. So, okay, so since some of you don't know, my name is Ashima Joshi and um, I am a, I'm your botany master teacher. I'm a botany master teacher in Vidantu also. I am originally from Kerala. Okay, I'm a Malayali. But I've been settled in Chennai for a long time. So, um, I know pretty much Manalam and Tamil. Hindi is a doubt. I'm not very fluent in Hindi. So, yes, I take the English sessions here. Okay? It's super duper fun to see you all here. And we'll start. Okay? So, today what we are planning is Plant Kingdom. We will do the classification, okay, of uh, Kingdom Plantae. And after that, we will go ahead and we will learn about algae, okay, which is the first group of plants or also known as primitive plants, okay, the most primitive type of plants we will start with, right? So, plant kingdom, right. Characteristics of plant kingdom. Now, basic things, okay, so I, I thought when we are starting with biology in this channel, Okay, uh, we thought we'll start with the basics. So we have taken everything from the NCRT and all you need to learn is also just the NCRT. Nothing more you have to learn. Okay, so this is going to be your introduction session. From the next class onwards, we will start, we will do bryophytes. Okay, so this is your classification and algae. Then we'll do bryophytes in the next session. Okay, now plant kingdom characteristics. Plants are autotrophic. Okay, this will be till 4.45 Lavanya. One hour session. Okay, we'll finish it off. They are autotrophic and non-motile. Yes, what do you mean by autotrophic? Okay, autotrophic means they can make their own food. Okay, they don't have to depend on anybody. They can make their own food. Okay, they don't have to worry. They don't have to worry about anybody else. Okay, they don't have to depend on anybody else for food. Okay, mama and dada, nobody is going to take make food for them. They'll make it on their own. Okay, that is autotrophic. And they are non-motile. Means they usually do not move. 
okay they do not move usually they are non motile we will learn motile uh, plants also we will learn motile organisms which come under plant kingdom also don't worry about that but yes this these are usually non motile uh, they are multicellular uh, okay i think i'll put an exception here okay except groot groot can move okay all those who watch marvel movies you will know who groot is okay so groot can move groot is the only plant which can move okay so let it be now for the serious people groot is not a plant okay it's just a character in a movie anyways now these are multicellular eukaryotes with cell wall okay cell wall usually made up of cellulose hemicellulose pectin and proteins okay and usually we will stop with pectin only okay okay so cellulose hemicellulose and pectin super right now they have large central vacuoles which is not there in animal cells okay animal cells do not have these large central vacuoles plants have one big huge vacuole and in fact these vacuoles also have a membrane called as the tonoplast okay which you will learn in cell chapter anyways they contain photosynthetic pigments called as chlorophyll okay so these photosynthetic pigments okay or chlorophyll is very very important okay and where do they have the chlorophyll they have the chlorophyll in their plastids okay so specifically if you go for plastids we can go for chloroplast okay we will find them in chloroplast and chromoplasts okay so here what am i doing i am just linking this chapter with okay i am just linking this chapter with the chapter we have learned or we will learn call as cell okay because in cell we learn about the cell organelles so i am i am just here to uh, what do you say relate okay the major thing that we have to learn for neat is that they are not going to tell you uh, or they're not going to put uh, put a question and say okay this is from plant kingdom okay or this is from biological classification or this is from photosynthesis they are going to consider the 11th and 12th portions as the whole of botany so they can ask questions that will have their roots okay in photosynthesis it can have roots from cell it can have roots from plant kingdom so you will find sometimes some of the questions you will not even be able to understand from which chapter it is because that information will be given in multiple chapters or can be related to multiple chapters that is very 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 important okay gazi azure fan club yes that is why i am using ppt okay i will give you the notes i'll put the notes in the telegram channel okay the telegram channel link is there in the description box so don't worry about it as soon as the class is over whenever i get a free time i will send them to you okay hi shivani yes right so we have chlorophyll pigment usually in chloroplast and chromoplast or some other uh, plastids like that okay so chlorophyll is in chloroplast chromoplast will have other pigments also now they have different organelles for anchorage reproduction support and photosynthesis they have different different structures different organs different organelles okay doing different different functions because we're talking about eukaryotes okay and eukaryotes usually have a division of labor okay they look you take care of this okay you take care of this like how we have in our channel okay there is a physics teacher to take care of physics there is a botany teacher to take care of botany there is a zoology teacher to take care of zoology so like that everybody has their own work to do and when they work together they have the cell working properly okay now they have uh, they usually reproduce sexually okay yes sexual reproduction is there when it comes to higher plants in lower plants you also find asexual means which we will learn in detail okay now types of classification okay so so far what we've learned is just the general characteristics when we are learning plant kingdom we are going to talk about the classification in plant kingdom okay which is specific to plant kingdom on the whole classification we have already studied you have already studied in biological classification 
here we are going to talk specifically about plant kingdom okay there has been two types of classification which is artificial system of classification and natural system of classification okay now this artificial system was the first one here they did not have much of scientific backup okay there was not much of scientific backup okay or they did it okay artificial system of classification was done just by looking at the plant literally look at the plant judge okay you you look like you belong to this group okay you look like you belong to this group okay they they just do uh, judging and they put them under different categories and it was done by carlos linnaeus okay the beginning of artificial classification was done by carlos linnaeus based on what andrician structure vegetative characteristics okay so he did not take too much of scientific basis he just looked at a plant and said okay you know what i think because of so and so characters because it has petals like this because it has leaves like this we'll put them into certain category okay oh hello digital larries digital larries is from jog falls my god i've learned that when i was young jog falls is a is the biggest uh, waterfalls in india and all of that but i've never been there okay anyways so this is your artificial system of classification then came up with natural system of classification okay this is this is having more of a scientific basis all right so here we have it has been proposed by george bentham and j d hooker okay joseph dalton hooker so bentham it's called as bentham and hooker classification uh, even now in many places we still prefer bentham and hooker classification okay because they have done a very good job uh, classifying plants okay so it is based on natural affinities towards or among organisms they took many characters into consideration and i would say it was very efficient okay it is a very efficient method there were drawbacks okay but still it was very very efficient right so we have natural system of classification which was done before and later came natural system of classification okay now <clears throat> then after so much more research okay the fact the moment we started learning about evolution okay we understood that evolution is there so we came up with even better ideas of classifying okay aristotle was a, was for the whole thing yes or kid okay here we talking about only about plant kingdom so we will give the prize to carlos linnaeus okay if it was the entire plant animal unicellular organisms everything together then we will give it to aristotle okay is that okay right so now we have phylogenetic system of classification phylogenetic system of classification is based on evolutionary relationships okay that is finding out okay this has certain characteristics of this plant maybe this is the ancestor okay or this is the descendant talking about ancestors okay maybe these organisms were evolved from this okay and in this chapter of plant kingdom we will also learn how evolution would have happened okay so we will talk about that as well evolutionary relationship when i'm talking about algae you will be able to see so many different types and i will tell you how it happens okay in bryophytes yes how evolution has happened i will tell you okay now uh the system of classification believes that organisms belonging to the same taxa okay taxa being group any group okay belonging to the same group have a common ancestor okay and they evolved from a common ancestor belong or even evolve from common ancestor okay hello atiyaman good afternoon right this is phylogenetic system of classification right now what we will learn is there are also certain modern types modern systems of classification oh it's so good to see green hearts thank you thank you so much okay so yes so i was talking about modern systems so these are uh, artificial system natural system they are all old old types hi sejal okay now we have or this is a little more modern approach okay where we are talking about numerical taxonomy cytotaxonomy and chemotaxonomy okay we learn about them one by one and 
uh, also in your ncrt please highlight the important terms okay so these are all taken directly from the ncrt you can open your ncrt book okay and read along with me right okay here i will highlight okay now numerical taxonomy there are certain terms that you should remember about numerical taxonomy now it is based on observable characteristics okay in this numbers and codes are assigned okay what is assigned numbers and codes are assigned to characters okay now you guys tell me when you go to shops for buying stuff okay have you ever seen that at the billing counter okay they have a scanner and they scan the barcode yes have you seen that people tell me have you seen that i'm good sejal how are you hi anchal tell me how many of you guys have seen barcodes or barcode system in shops grocery shops supermarket wherever yes no hello okay maybe this is a lag yeah okay i'm glad i'm glad so there are certain barcodes and everything will have a certain bar barcode of their own okay so these barcode they are arranged also according to the barcode when they scan the system will know which uh, product we have taken okay so the same way here each of the characteristics also are given certain numbers okay very specific numbers or codes are given so that we know okay this belonging to all these characters are there okay all the all the organisms belonging to this number will belong to one simple one one same category okay so if we are talking about uh, say for example in a plant okay we are talking about all the plants that are having five petals five petal flowers okay so you give a number you give a code to that character okay having five petals so when we put it into the computer uh, with you know their own proper programming and everything all the plants which have those five petals will come into one category automatically yes so that is how they include a little bit of mathematics they will include a little bit of computer and they made it into numerical taxonomy yes yes this is plant kingdom only kaveri you open your plant kingdom chapter you will get it okay this is the introduction then so numbers and codes are assigned and they are later processed by using computers okay they are processed by using computers okay so each character is given equal importance nobody is saying that oh having six petals is better than having five petals nothing like that okay hi vinod thank you right so they are all given equal importance and they are considered at the same time and they are put into categories according to those codes the same way we have cyto taxonomy okay whenever we learn about the word cyto okay so whenever you learn about the word cyto please remember cyto means something to do with cell okay something to do with cell and in cell we have learnt about chromosomes okay so the entire process of classifying organisms based on either the number of chromosome structure of chromosome or behavior of chromosome okay so all the organisms having say in diploid structure they all of them having 14 number of chromosomes they come together okay all of them having 16 will come together okay so this is cyto taxonomy based on chromosome number structure and behavior so you see i have highlighted certain points here remember those numerical taxonomy number codes computers okay you can take a bulk in fact in numerical taxonomy bulk number of characters can be taken bulk means many number of characters okay bulk characters can be taken into consideration okay then we have a chemo taxonomy chemo is anything that that is related to chemical studies okay chemical studies so in chemo taxonomy we will see okay there is a plant here it's a very beautiful plant okay uh cyto taxonomy is not classified under numerical okay number of chromosome is taken no okay here we have chromosome number there they are taking the characteristics ka number it's two different thing uh, vinod okay high study with ram okay 
so yes so key more taxonomy is okay is talking about okay we are not going to judge the plant by its outer appearance we will see how many chemicals are there or what type of chemicals are there and we will classify these plants based on the chemicals okay so we have chemo taxonomy using chemical constituents of the organism to classify them okay basically what you need to understand is just learn the names numerical so numbers codes computers okay cyto taxonomy cell chromosome and chemo taxonomy chemicals cool okay moving on so that is about classification basics of classification that we have to learn in plant kingdom okay uh, kaveri did you find out where we are learning okay what we are learning we will start with algae now okay classification we will learning of plants only don't worry yes and also yes go ahead and put the like right so we going to start with algae okay algae is considered as the most primitive type of plant okay the most primitive type okay primitive or primary plants okay primitive type of plants means the ones which are the most simple types okay they were the old 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 ones okay big big ancestors they are all right hi o okay so characteristics of algae we will learn first the general characteristics then we will specify algae into three groups and we will learn the specific characteristics okay it's going to be very very easy now they are simple thalloid thalloid means they have un differentiated body okay what do you mean by that that means no stem leaf root etc okay they don't have specific stem leaf and root it's very simple okay it's very simple structure they don't have much fancy structure saying okay this is a stem this is a root and all that nothing okay now so they are thalloid autotrophic and mostly aquatic mostly aquatic okay so this is where i will tell you a little bit about evolution we all believe okay or evolutionary biologists believe that life started in water okay so in the planet of earth we all believe that life started in water okay it was easier to form compounds or what do you say organic compounds in water and that is how the first what do you say when we talk about archaebacteria okay archaebacteria started uh, or was formed in water okay and then slowly there has been many many variations in the organisms and different types of organisms started happening okay now these organisms uh, they again evolved so much so we consider that since algae is primitive plant okay the most primitive type of plants the least evolved type of plants they also belong to water most of the time okay does algae cause diseases no no there aren't any algae that causes diseases as much okay not that i know of anyways now they are found in different types of habitats okay habitats are what place of stay okay so when we talking about a plant when we say that this plant belongs to sea water okay or this plants belong to sea, rivers those are their habitats the region where they live okay they like moist stones soil and wood okay something that is very very moist it's very watery or it has a high amount of water they prefer those kind of regions okay some of them are also found in association okay they are also found in association with fungi okay so that means algae and fungi together forming lichen this is something we have learned in biological classification right hi pranal hello Siv uh, shiva and also sometimes they are associated with animals okay have you ever seen this animal have you guys ever seen this animal it's algae seen like sloth animal see that's the whole point okay here animals okay they have association with this animal Okay, this this is this is kind of my spirit animal okay sometimes some days are so lazy it's so difficult for me to get out of the bed only i behave like a sloth bear yes 
ओम इज करेक्ट इट सीन्स येस so here why they are talking about algae and why they talk about sloth bear in a botany class is because you see the fur of the sloth bear okay so algae likes living on them okay so there are many many algae living on the sloth bear why okay why because the sloth bears they don't move at all the algae is not going to know no okay the algae just lives on the sloth bear okay and you see sometimes these sloth bears they live on high branches of uh, trees okay so they will get a lot of sunlight you see you see what they doing they very clever okay so since the sloth bear has a lot of these algae the algae is going to get food okay because sunlight is there they'll easily be able to make food now what is the benefit for sloth bear what is sloth bear getting sloth bear is covered with green color so now the sloth bear is going to get camouflaged so if there is anybody looking for sloth bear i want to eat a sloth bear today okay they won't be able to find the sloth bear yes they won't be able why why because in the jungle this guy is going to be covered with uh, covered with green color and this guy is going to be sleeping okay so nobody is going to know that there is a sloth bear sitting there okay so it helps the so sloth bear to protect itself from the predators and it helps the algae to get more sunlight and make more food see win win solution yes okay so th we said that they they prefer mostly aquatic okay that's the problem with uh, that's the problem and beauty with biology we are using the word mostly okay not all they never said that all algae are aquatic okay they just said that some of them or most of them are aquatic do you understand what i'm saying that is why we need to understand english properly when it comes to ncert okay we have to know a lot of english because sometimes with english words they trick you they trick you big time with english words okay so be careful when they mention mostly it's just mostly there are many examples without also okay hi shruti right so this is again general characteristics we will learn much 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 more there are always exceptions right okay exceptions are not only there in chemistry even in biology there's a lot of exceptions okay so algae show variation in form and size absolutely hi arushi no exception no biology absolutely oh okay so now we are talking about the body or the thallus of algae okay the thallus some of them are microscopic okay some of them there are there there are um, bigger algae also okay we will talk, we will talk about that they some of them are microscopic like chlamydomonas okay and also unicell yes some are colonial like volvox what do you mean by col colonial yes do you guys uh, do you where where in what type of houses do you live in do you live in flats do you live in societies do you live in colonies where do you, where do you live in no lavanya algae is one component when algae is having a symbiotic relationship with fungi okay when they are best friends that becomes lichen okay and good pranal right so i'm asking you what is it colony ha huh? thank you asi01 tell me people where do you guys live in what kind of houses do you live uh so in chennai i live in a flat so i i understand colonies okay so even otherwise there are many colonies residential colonies in cities okay where there are many homes so in a residential colony there will be many 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 homes they all live together yes like gazi said uh, okay gazi ashar's fan club said uh, colonial means in groups yes absolutely in groups so here also you will find it will look like it will look like many unicellular okay it will look like many unicellular algae living in groups okay so you can see something like this you see each of these is an algae okay these are all algae they are all living in a big globe okay and you will have inside this also they are forming new new colonies these are smaller daughter colonies okay 
so the we, they have colonies inside colonies okay apartments yes nice okay so we have wall box which is a colonial form okay and some are filamentous filamentous means filament always means thread like okay filamentous means thread like okay so spirogyra uh eurothrix yes they are filamentous or they are thread like structures okay so we have unicellular we have colonial we have filamentous examples are important okay examples are important try to re relate okay so you can see here eurothrix is there or at least if you remember the pictures okay if you remember the pictures of the organisms you can easily remember certain examples okay so chlamydomonas yes you can see chlamydomonas here is a unicellular single structure okay then we can see uh, wall box they live in colonies then spirogyra is there it looks like threads eurothrix also looks like threads superb superb so we are moving ahead okay we will go a little more specific okay reproduction reproduction here again we talk about general reproduction that you can see in all the types of algae we will go specific also okay they do have all the three different types they have asexual they have vegetative and they have sexual reproduction okay starting with vegetative reproduction okay vegetative is by, done by fragmentation okay uh, it's a type of vegetative reproduction it's very common okay so what happens is fragmentation is something we all know so it gets cut okay so somebody is going to stamp on it it gets cut into two three pieces each of those pieces will grow into a new algae okay so that happens okay so each of the fragment will grow into three new individuals right that is that's what we talk about in fragmentation okay it's a very simple and very common type of vegetative reproduction okay thallus again means always remember thallus means body okay entire body or entire organism why these plants are doing so many modes of reproduction why can't they just stick to one no i know we know i'll tell you now i i have an answer for that also now when it comes to fragmentation okay or vegetative reproduction it happens by mistake okay i'll explain my own question it's a very interesting question it happens by mistake the algae is not telling okay hello okay you come and break me i'll grow into three new plants right it's not happening it's happening by mistake okay i've been broken yes i have been broken by somebody walking over me but i will not give up i will instead multiply okay i will instead multiply so that is how we have fragmentation now asexual reproduction is something that they choose they will you know what it's easier okay i really don't want to wait for the male to come or i really don't want the you know want to wait for the female to come and then they fuse and all that's too much of work okay asexual reproduction is more simple i want children i i am i am enough okay so they will do asexual reproduction to produce more numbers that is why they have asexual now why do they have sexual reproduction they feel that okay you know what it looks like we are going to have a very dry period they might not be water they might not be enough food uh, you know nutrients or anything so at that time okay at that time what they will do is they say sexual reproduction is good because in sexual reproduction you get a different what do you say set of dna also yes so they are like okay you know what if my genes mix with some other good genes okay we are having two sets of good genes then you will get really good you know group of uh, genes and then maybe that baby okay will survive all the odds right so for the sake of variation only they do sexual reproduction okay so you see they are all doing things for a reason they are not reproducing for fun okay now asexual reproduction like i said they produce different types of spores okay so different types of spores are there this is very very common because this is something that they do okay this is something that they choose to do okay zoo spores are the most common okay zoo is something related to movement so that means zoo spores are most common you see flagella here okay because they have flagella they are called as motile okay they are motile because of flagella and because they move they call as zoospores 
okay they are called as zoospores because they move as well okay it's a most common type of asexual reproduction okay they have flagella and they are motile they germinate to give rise to new plants okay so we have a zoosporangium okay sporangium is a container which which has the spores right so the sporangium is there zoosporangium which contains zoospores there are other types of uh, asexual reproduction also we have a planospores okay a planospores which are kind of non motile okay they are not motile okay then we can have hypnospores there are so many different types but you don't have to learn all of that basic one you need to know is zoospores okay so learn this sexual reproduction so fragmentation we learn asexual we learn sexual reproduction sexual reproduction we will learn uh, there are three types okay there are three types of sexual reproduction depending okay depending upon their gametes okay depending upon the nature of gametes involved okay it depends upon the nature of gametes involved okay or the shape or size of gametes uh algae only reproduce in the presence of water most of the time they need a little bit of water okay thank you abhi you don't have to learn this life cycle of zoospore okay you don't have to actually learn about it it's all cool it's very simple i'll maybe at the end if i have a free slide i will show you okay so isogamous type is when see this is all going to be you're going to judge these three types based on how the gametes look like okay now I will finish this, and you will tell me what kind of reproduction we have in human beings, right? So listen carefully. Isogamous is when gametes are similar in size. Okay, gametes may be flagellated, as in Chlamydomonas. Okay, so in Chlamydomonas it is motile or not flagellated, as in Spirogyra. Okay, so when we show about Chlamydomonas, I'll I'll draw this for you. Okay, so in Chlamydomonas, their gametes are going to look like like this. Okay. You see, both the gametes that I drew, they look same, same size, same motility. Okay, so both of them have flagella also, right? So this is for Chlamydomonas. For Spirogyra, imagine they're going to look like this. Okay, no flagella, but you see again, same size and same. Uh, what do you say, motility? Both of them will have the same motility. This is isogamous. Iso means similar. Okay, iso means similar. The word iso means similar, or you can also call it as homogamous. Okay, you can also call it as homogamous. Okay, some so in some places they might give you as homogamous. Homogamous, don't worry. Then we have an iso. Okay, so here two gametes which are dissimilar. Okay. they are dissimilar in size as in some species of chlamydomonas so you can see one might look like this okay the other one might look like this okay one will be big one will be small but then both of them can have uh, flagella or not whatever okay so they are dissimilar in size here they are focusing on size okay dissimilar in size then we have oogamous Okay, oogamous is where there are two gametes which are dissimilar in size. Already, they are dissimilar in size. In addition, they also have different motility. Okay, different motility will be there. That is, their female will be big and stationary. Okay, this is going to be their female. They'll be non-motile. Okay, and the male will be small and motile. Okay, the this is the male. Okay, it will be motile and small. Okay, very good, Vinod. Humans have what kind? Okay, do we have isogamous and isogamous or oogamous? Very good, very good, Tanima. Okay, humans have oogamous type because their female gamete is inside the ovary. Yes, it's in the inside the ovary. It is inside the female body, and the sperm has a tail. Okay, it will move. So the female structure, the female gamete is stationary. It doesn't go anywhere. It is bigger in size. Okay, and the sperm is small, and it will have a tail. It will move. Yes, very good, very good, very good, very good. So green hearts to Vinod and Tanima. 
okay and study with ram also and gazi asher still fan club also very good very good okay so these are three types this you would have already learned it fungi this is very important you will learn this again in 12th reproduction chapter okay this is a very 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 important topic okay this is very very important please learn this properly okay chalo now economic importance okay economic importance uh, how can we use algae in human life okay how can we if we have to ask doubts how we can you ask here only no i'll answer okay furkan yes so how how can humans okay how can humans use these algae right okay so about half the total carbon dioxide fixation let's talk about carbon dioxide fixation okay oh uh, yes yes i'll tell you okay let's talk about carbon dioxide fixation what is carbon dioxide fixation that is our photosynthesis okay that's our photo synthesis they are talking about okay so photosynthesis right so carbon dioxide fixation on earth is carried out by algae through photosynthesis so a lot of photosynthesis happens a lot of carbon dioxide is fixed okay cara is an example of green algae which is multicellular cycle okay right some marine ground algae and red algae produce hydrocolloids like algin and carrageen okay algin in is produced by brown algae and carrageen is produced by red algae okay they used commercially now hydrocolloids now what are hydrocolloids they are water absorbing or water what do you say let's give it as absorbing only okay water absorbing or water retaining okay substances okay so have you guys have you guys seen bandages yes do you know what bandages are yes do you guys know what bandages are okay they are those small stickers which have which have some medicine in the center okay you have the bandage yes okay so this region no this region this is your this is where hydrocolloids are used okay hydrocolloids here are used to retain the medicine okay so this medicine when you put it on to your hurt what happens is this medicine will slowly be given because we have hydrocolloids here and that will heal your wound okay that will heal your wound uh, we do have a telegram channel for can the the link is there in the description yeah some universal algae can be used as food supplements yes i'll talk about that also okay so hydrocolloids is very important because there have been several questions from previous years based on algin from brown algae carrageen from red algae both of them these are chemical structures they these are chemical compounds which are hydrocolloids okay and they used in bandages then other than that okay let's talk about uh we do have we do have other examples also okay like gracilaria and gelidium okay gracilaria and gelidium they give us something called as agar okay they give, they produce something called as agar and on this agar you can do a lot of microbiology experiments you can grow uh, fungi you can grow bacteria on these agar okay to make nutrient uh, medium so we can use that also okay and then yes like uh, like lavanya said okay some there are unicellular fungi called as chlorella okay chlorella and spirulina okay we have chlorella and spirulina that can be used as food okay this is also used as food even by space travelers okay so you can make convert this into small capsules or powders and that you can eat because it has very high protein content very high nutrient content okay yes you can make yes you can make agar you can make jelly 
Okay, you can make ice creams. Okay, you can make a lot of, a lot of things like that. Okay, you can do all of that. Yes, by space travelers. Superb, superb, superb. So this is this is some kind of an economic importance. Okay, and then, then. Since yes, agar is very uh, very common. It's there in ice creams and jellies. It's mentioned. Okay, and jellyrim and grassyrim. Both of them are from red algae. Okay, both of them are from red algae. Chlorella spirulina, chlorella and spirulina. Both of them are green algae. Okay, you need to learn this also. Yes, very good. They use as food supplements. Okay, even by space travelers. Okay. Now we have classification of algae, and basically classification of algae happens with the help of pigments present. Okay, pigments present in them. Okay, so this is based on the pigments that you find in these algae, right? So whatever pigments they are. So we have chlorophyce, example chlamydia monasti. The examples are all given in one slide because you have to learn the examples. So use this slide. You can take a screenshot of this, or I will send this in the Telegram channel. You can take from then. Please. Put up the entire chapter ka examples. You put them up together, so it becomes easier for you to revise later. Okay. So Chlamydomonas, Volvox, Eurothrix, Pyrogyra, Cara. Okay, and then we can add Chlorella, Spirulina. Okay. All of this you can add. Now in few of these, few of these is brown algae. Example: Ectocarpus, Dictyora, Laminaria, Sargassum, Fucus. Okay. uh kelps also you can add kelps okay then rhodophyce we have polysiphonia porphyria grassleria gelidium they are all coming under rhodophyce or red algae okay so yes you have to learn that also what are what is each okay so chlorophyce is green algae okay phyophyce is brown algae I don't have brown color, so no problem. And rhodophyce is red algae. Okay, rhodophyce is red algae. Super. It's a pigment ohm. Fucus and then is a pigment. Let's learn about them. Okay, we will learn about all the pigments and everything here. So chlorophyce, you find unicellular examples, colonial filamentous. Yes, we know the examples also of these. Okay, pigments are yes, chlorophyll A, B in chloroplast. So remember, okay, in chlorophyce. green color algae we have pigments chlorophyll chlorophyll a and b okay you will find variety of a b c d right so green algae is going to have a and b we're going to start with that okay you can have different shapes of chloroplast also now we've all learned that chloroplast is kind of you know it's a it's a it's an oval shaped structure okay we have oval shaped structure inside which have we have the thylakoids and everything okay it's a double membrane structure This is what we have learned, but you can have different shapes according to the algae, right? Agar is the example. Grassleria, uh, Grassleria and Jellyrim are examples of red algae. Study with us, okay? Red algae. Right. So discoid shape that is something like a disc or plate shaped chloroplast, okay? Discoid or plate shape. Reticulate is like a network, okay? When you have chloroplast like a network connecting each other, okay? Cup shaped. we can have cup shaped chloroplast then spiral okay spiral or ribbon shaped okay in different different species you will find different different types of algae okay discoid and plate like right you can have different shapes of chloroplast in these algae right now then some of these algae okay now when they doing photosynthesis they make a lot of food so they will store all the food in pyrenoids okay what is they doing storage bodies like how we have cupboards okay hi rajeshwar yes absolutely chlorophyll a and b okay so chlorophyll a and b are pigments okay they are colored compounds pigments which can attract light and do photosynthesis okay hi vasanth right so we have Pyrenoids located in chloroplast. They contain proteins besides starch. 
so they store food okay their food is in the form of protein and starch always remember this okay we do have a table so we will revise with the table later but yes these are like basic things and then cell wall so they have two layers of cell wall okay so outer is the cellulose layer and uh, sorry inner cellulose layer and outer pectose layer yes how often do you guys use the word op you use no okay you use the word op so remember that okay outer pectose okay and inner cellulose i c and op okay remember it like that op is outer pectose layer inner cellulose layer okay chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b ka difference they are molecules they are chemical molecules so they have a different functional group okay so they have difference only in their molecular formula or the structure okay that to very slight difference main structure will be the same just slight slight difference will be there okay right yes ganga yes i do i don't have many gangas in my class so i do remember you which reproduction fragmentation or by spores that is asexual reproduction by zoospores are there this is something we already learned okay we just we just made mentioning that into groups so this is that's why i said we took time in learning general characteristics now in different ty different types we just putting the general characteristics here okay okay rajeshwar pectose is a sugar okay pectose is a carbohydrate it's a chemical okay carbo hydrate like glucose fructose like that pectose is a sugar right okay rajeshwar then sexual reproduction it can be isogamous anisogamous or oogamous depending upon the species hi ganga nice to meet you okay now pheophyce or brown algae yes pheophyce or brown algae they are found in marine okay so they like the sea and the ocean okay they like the sea and the oceans the pigments are a c carotenoids and xanthophylls okay or specifically we will say fucoxanthin okay xanthophyll specifically fucoxanthin this fucoxanthin only gives it uh, that brown color okay say yes they do have same mechanism they are, they're all all these pigments chlorophyll a b c d okay and the other pigments be it fucoxanthin be it uh, be it erythro i'm uh, sorry uh, phycoerythrin whatever it is they're all going to do the same thing that is photosynthesis okay is there any batch for droppers yes rofina there are many batches for droppers you can check the vedantu link okay and if you want discount you can go in for asje pro also there are batches for droppers that are going on already in vedantu okay rofina hi arun right so here the reserve food that is we learned about pyrenoids no here the reserve food is complex carbohydrate laminarin or mannitol okay in chlorophyce it was protein starch like normal starch but when it comes to pheophyce they like we don't want to be special so it's laminarin and mannitol okay protoplast contain plastid central vacuole nucleus yes this is all there in all the cells okay nothing very difficult i mean different at all they have a cellulosic cell wall covered by a coating of algin which is our hydrocolloid okay so each of the cell will have a coating of hydrocolloid okay they'll have a coating of hydrocolloid so this is it pheophyce the examples we have already mentioned in the previous slides okay we have already mentioned them in the previous slide so that's there okay now rhodophyce sorry yeah pheophyce again it is attached to the substratum what is the substratum okay it can be the soil or river bed or sea bed okay substratum is the material on which these plants are growing okay so substratum is usually the soil okay so by a hold fast okay hold fast is a root like structure not a proper root okay root like structure stalk or stipe which is a stem like structure okay and photosynthetic organ frond which is our leaf like structure okay so here 
this is still a thallus only they don't have proper root stem and leaf but they have similar structures okay they have a hold fast they have a stipe and they have blades or fronds okay they have blades or fronds so fragmentation is there vegetative reproduction asexual reproduction by flagellate zoospores they are very 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 important okay this is very important for you okay this is done by by flagellate zoospores now what do you mean by by flagellate by flagellate means they will have two flagella okay so if you have a gamete like this okay they can have two flagella like this okay so by flagellate right gelatin is coating that is if there is a cell like this okay this is a cell wall they will have one coating okay so they will have a coating okay outside it called as this will be jelly jelly type okay that will be your gelatinous coating okay this is your gelatin is coating got it yeah hi dikshita yes yes oh right okay so we have biflagellate zoospores this is how we have the gelatin is coating since you asked sexual reproduction isogamous and isogamous or oogamous depending upon the species again okay uh if it starts now it will get over by january pranav yes And then we have rhodophyce which is our dear 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 red algae okay so this is our red algae and they always like marine forms okay they always like living in salt water okay now pigments are chlorophyll a d and phycoethylene now you see a pattern here okay chlorophyce had a and b okay chlorophyce had a and b and uh, phycoethylene had a and c along with fucosanthin now rhodophyce has a and d okay so learn it like that a and b is there in chlorophyce a and c is there in phycoethylene a and d is there in rhodophyce rhodophyce when you have a d so chlorophyll d is here remember it like that okay yes reserve food is floridian starch it was there yes like om said they have asked this question in our recent paper also okay that is why i'll give you the table we should have all the information that vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation asexual reproduction non motile spores now one specific thing i want you people to learn about red algae or rhodophyce is that no cells okay no organisms have flagella okay none of the organisms in ro rhodophyce will have flagella okay now pyriform okay the word pyriform in your ncrt okay the word pyriform in your ncrt means pyriform means what do you say one second okay pyriform is a shape okay it's called as pure shaped okay something that looks like a pair okay that's a pyriform okay a is common they can't move yes none of the cells in rhodophyce will be able to move they're all non motile spores or in any ways they're all non motile okay sexual reproduction is oogamous now you see this is very specific in chlorophyce and rhodophyce in chlorophyce and phycophyce we learned it can be oogamous and isogamous or isogamous okay but in rhodophyce we learned it is entirely oogamous okay so specific things to learn about and and yes do you all have this table in your ncrt book do you all have this table yes please learn this is this is very 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 important okay this is a very very important table because we have all the information most of the information is there in this okay so we have chlorophyce c green algae chlorophyll a and b you know this okay in in phycophyce it is a and c in rhodophyce it is a and d you see you learn this as a pattern okay yes 
brackish water habitat is when you have plants or anything living in estuaries okay where the river and the sea meets okay there there will be a lot of marshy land there will be a lot of soil with water it will all be very very uh, what do you say very what do you say muddy muddy land and high salt content that's called as brackish water okay so this fucoxanthin okay xanthophyll in fufyc brown algae phycoerythrin okay erythrin erythrin is a red color compound okay that's why in our body is also yes in our body is also we have red blood cells they are called as erythrocytes yes do you agree with me yes rofi now it will be shared okay so do you know that rbcs are called as erythrocytes the same way because they are red in color the same way phycoerythrin okay red color right stored food starch and also you can include protein okay protein and starch here mannitol and lamiarin here we have floridian starch yes now cell wall cellulose okay uh, inner cellulose and outer pectin you remember this okay we learnt about outer pectin okay so cellulose and pectose okay here we have cellulose and algin which is our what do you say outer layer here we have carrageen okay you can add this carrageen is there so you see whatever we learned so far put them or add them into this table so that it is easier for you to study okay so flagella flagella can be 2 to 8 2 to 8 means 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 anything equal will be there apical apical means you will find them at the tip of the cell okay for example if this is how the cell is going to be you have them at the tip okay this is called apical okay now in uh, in few of i see you have two unequal okay and lateral okay so you have two one will be long one will be short okay you have unequal and lateral lateral means from the side okay when you have it from the side okay a uh, hemoglobin is a protein that you find inside your rbcs okay it's a protein small substance rbc is a big cell okay compared to hemoglobin right so lateral means to other sides okay in rhodophyce there is no flagella at all okay rhodophyce there is no flagella at all habitat fresh water brackish water salt water in chlorophyce most of them they do still prefer fresh water okay when it comes to uh, brown algae we have fresh water quite rare brackish water salt water and in rhodophyce it's all it's all it's all most of the time it is going to be uh, brackish water or marine water okay so this is very 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 important table and i have also put in all the extra stuff into this the t the pdf will be shared to you people okay now if you feel yes see i have one one hour class no okay i cannot give you every information if you want to learn so much more at the neat level or even more than that you can always go for the je and neat courses okay which are there for our legends yes this is specifically for legends right 2024 legends courses okay so we do have recorded pro like courses yes so we do have uh, what do you say pro like ai courses are there okay that is available you have live courses also yes you can see the differences okay we do have in live we we have master teachers teaching you and at the same time we also have to take the doubts we also have our class teachers yes now there are so many so many features okay and these are the rates okay if you feel like you can't afford uh, you know the live courses for the entire 2 years and you want something that will be easy on your money you can go for ai courses okay the ai courses are at 14850 okay this is for 2 years right this is for 2 whole years this will include your 11th and 12th okay if you go for live courses they will be able to give you pdf okay and in pro classic you will get books and pdf okay we have books called as tatva books 
which has a lot of colors and pictures and everything the teachers themselves have also helped and we have an amazing content team okay so they've made the books we will give you the hard copy as well as a soft copy okay and yes again post class doubt solving also is available in pro classic okay but if you don't need all of that you're fine with the others okay you want lectures you want concepts to be clear you can go for ai life okay you could also go for the other pro light whatever you feel is comfortable for you okay now for all of this if you need to get some kind of what do you say discount if you feel like okay even without discount you can go for it i'm not saying no if you want a further discount you can use this coupon code which is asje pro okay because it's n light channel okay we have put it as asje okay so this is going to be the rate after my discount okay the links are there the links are all there in the description box you can check it out if you guys are new here okay this is a channel entirely for neat and j students okay who speak english i know sometimes it is difficult okay if you don't understand hindi or if you feel that in hindi the explanations are not good enough you want it in english this is a channel entirely where we speak only english okay so you can check out this channel you can subscribe because we have videos now how many classes do we have in a week i have got two slots for enli channel one is for legends one is for ultra legends okay so this time i could not have a session for ultra legends from next week onwards we will have for ultra legends and legends okay one one class each i'll be there but other teachers are having more, many many more sessions right and if you really want to check out okay if you want to check out the yeah if you want to check it out then you can find the description box here i'll put up the pdf in the telegram group okay you can also try the week quiz so you can find this okay so pro light is here for both english and english batches are here so you whatever you feel like whatever you're comfortable with you can take it okay and yes telegram channel link is there you can join that yes so you have all the information here okay and oh ho oh, oh. ho yeah that too okay so let's meet again next week people yes i have another class at 5 you also have another class at sindur ma'am i guess at 5 or 5:30 okay is there any class in tamil channel today evening i don't have today tomorrow yes ma'am tomorrow hi somya good to see you yes okay so see you all very very soon okay it's nice to meet you all right bye lavanya bye bye take care all of you okay next class we will do bryophytes okay i'll give you the life cycle of bryophytes also okay so we're going to meet again soon bye bye and don't forget to share and subscribe